by all indications, the Reserve Bank will try and look beyond the effects of the flood, but with the banks under pressure with less collateral, uh, will the big four move on interest rates anyway? Uh, let's bring in Stephen Nash from Fig Securities into all of this. And uh, Stephen, it's it's kind of one of those cases, isn't it, where you've got ASIC for one, the regulators saying we will not let banks sort of get away from their responsibilities under new reforms. So the cost of, of I guess, provisioning is only set to rise. Now they've got to, I guess, ponder their next move. What are you saying or believing will happen? Well, I think there's been a bit of commentary uh, generally about the possible inflationary impacts of rebuilding after the Queensland floods, but I think when you consider it in more detail, there's other aspects that arise. One is um, a reduction in the uh, collateral of, uh, of loan books for the banks, in other words, uh, asset prices uh, reducing and what that might mean for loan provisioning. Um, also, the reconstruction effort will be concentrated in Queensland. That may reduce fiscal stimulation in other areas of the economy, so that may be contractionary in other areas of the economy. So broadly, uh, there's pluses and minuses here, and I think the pluses have been emphasised, but not the minuses. So what is the overall impact then, do you feel, net-net? Well, I think there's going to be a loss of uh, production, po possibly up to a month in, in uh, Queensland. So that's roughly $20 billion. And then there's the capital side of it, which could be uh, up to uh, over $10 billion, so it's, it's very substantial uh, impact. Yeah. Yeah, in, in a sense though, uh, you talk about some stimulus not therefore going ahead. Mm. What would be the productivity cost in that regard? I mean, are, are you saying this was, this is going to be sort of robbing Peter to pay Paul or, or uh, what? Uh, uh, yeah, the, the federal government has the uh, target of getting uh, the budget back to surplus, so if there's extra spending in Queensland, and there appears there will be, then that means there's going to have to be cuts in other areas. So I suppose that, that will have an impact on what the Reserve Bank does. Um, uh, you can see that the markets are, are you know, looking at uh, this very carefully and, um, and, ha and will respond accordingly, I think, yeah. How important do you think it is that the budget in these circumstances is returned to surplus by the deadline previously set out? Or have things changed? Look, I, th I think it's important for uh, the government to keep to its announced um, return to surplus. I think that's important. Um, I don't think any extra supply in the bond market would really affect uh, bond pricing at all. In eff effectively, we need more bonds, so I think uh, that won't be a problem. But um, Sticking to announcements is a good idea, particularly in this environment where a lot of the European countries are come, coming under pressure and things are changing there. I think uh, it would be prudent to keep to that goal, yeah. Isn't the, the argument, though, that anyway it, it's, it's been required that the, the government just pare back its own spending and this is, if anything, going to uh, force them kicking and screaming to do just that? It's actually a, a, a sort of a glass half full way of looking at how you come out of a crisis like this. Yeah, I think yeah, the reduction in government sp spending in other areas it probably will be positive, and um, you know, th I think that uh, the Reserve Bank will take that into account. Uh, so there will be that inflationary impact of uh, higher food prices than reconstruction effort, but then the overall uh, broader uh, reduction in fiscal stimulation in, in the other parts of the economy has to be taken into account. Yeah. What is the bank reaction going to be though this time? You know, Gail Kelly took a bullet arguably as uh, leading the charge with the big four uh, mm. raising above and beyond uh, after yeah. the November rise. So, you know, strategically, what do they do? Can they still point to higher funding costs? I think they, I think they can and they will. The average cost of funding is uh, rising as cheaper funding rolls off. Mm. And uh, by, the, by, the, by about June this year, I imagine that they'll be ready or in need of uh, another increase in rates. So it really doesn't really matter what the RBA does. I think we'll probably get a, a rise from the major banks anyway. Mm -hmm. On the um, global funding markets then, just on the European debt crisis, mm. uh, we spoke earlier to Clifford Bennett who believes there is no sovereign debt crisis and while people or finance ministers are talking about mm. increasing the size of the bailout, no one's actually going to go and ask for money. Uh, not Portugal, not Spain and not Italy and not anyone else. Um, mm. What is your view on the extent to which this is contained? Um, look, I, I think there is a, a definite uh, sovereign debt crisis in, in Europe. I mean, there's no question about that. <laughs> it's forcing the Europeans to uh, go into this uh, fiscal austerity, which is cutting growth all the time. I think that's the really important aspect of all these problems, how it's affecting growth. Now, the Europeans are uh, 
basically backing themselves into a corner here because the, the uh, individual countries are getting picked off by the market. I think there's, there's a need for more fiscal uh, consolidation and a more uh, unified uh, issuance of bonds from a central borrowing authority. That will take time and I think uh, there may be uh, a possibility of some of these countries asking for extra funding going forward. However, I think the, the idea of more consolidated funding is slowly dawning on the European Union and that, that should eventuate over a period of time. You said yeah. that would need the support of Germany, wouldn't it? Yes. Which is the difficulty? I think at, at the moment uh, they seem to be uh, not assisting with the overall um, uh, discussions, but uh, there are benefits for Germany in the Union. They get a lot of trade benefits. So there's upside uh, for, for keeping this together, and I think the Germans realise that. Just a brief thought as well on the China connection, because uh, to date they have been, uh, in the absence of that central bond buying program, they have shown an appetite for these informal uh, purchases that have gone through the system. You think Greece, for one, uh, was, uh, can point and thank their lucky stars that China stepped into the breach. What's China's... Uh, pool of funds, where's it next going to be put to work? Are you picking? Well, I'd imagine there'll be more opportunities in Europe. I think the ECB, as I mentioned last week, mm. will make it difficult for people to short um, peripheral European bonds, but they'll, they will continue to try to do that, and uh, I imagine there's going to be bargains to be had going forward in some of these um, uh, peripheral European countries. I think that was probably the focus at this stage. All right, Stephen Nash, uh, time's going to tell on that one. Look forward to your, uh, your further insights very Thanks. soon. Many thanks. Thanks very much. Stephen Nash, Dr. Stephen Nash from Fig Security.